New Center 7 tonight with Steve Rondonero, Sally Fitz, Mark Wollen Broward, Andy Lescano Sports, Bob Soper Weather. Good evening. Miami's crime rate is down, and to keep it down, city commissioners tonight have decided to put more police officers out on the street. News Center 7's Rick Sanchez was at that meeting. He's back in the newsroom right now. Rick? Steve Sally, the city commission meeting tonight was a lesson in two human characteristics. One, what is said is often not what is done, and two, what one sets out to do is often the last thing accomplished. Most commissioners said before the meeting that they did not want more police officers, but when it came down to a vote, they did. And the commission set out tonight to approve a new budget. They did. In the last four years, the city of Miami has spent more money on police protection than any city in the country. Subsequently, the crime rate in those four years has dropped considerably. Is it time to stop hiring police officers? Well, no. Not according to Miami Citizens Against Crime. They want the city to hire 100 more men and women in blue. The fundamental purpose of government is to protect its people. That's why governments were organized in the first place when cavemen started organizing themselves, was to mutual protection. That's number one priority. But city commissioners want money spent on all the city's programs, not just police. There is no other city in this big country that has more cops per square mile than does the city of Miami. We're number one. In a last-minute compromise, the commission voted to allow the hiring of 25 extra police officers. But that means other city programs will suffer. It means 14 other city workers will lose their jobs. And in at least one city park, recreational activities will be reduced. All city-sponsored concerts and discos will be reduced. There will be a delay in restoration of police computers. And there will be a reduction in Miami's representation at national trade shows, which could result in the loss of convention business. The vote to increase police protection passed by a 3-2 to two margin. What didn't pass was what the city had originally set out to do, approve its 1984 budget. That will be done next Thursday, just two days shy of fiscal 1984. Now, since the final budget was not approved, we can't tell you just yet that your property taxes, if you live in Miami, will be going up. But it looks real good that next Thursday it will be official. If you live in an average home that's a value of $62,000, expect to pay $14 more next year. I guess I wasn't going to tell you. Well, Steve Sally? All right. Thank you, Rick. All this week, the city of North Miami is conducting what it calls Safe City Week, a series of lectures and seminars to make residents more aware of crime and what they can do to stop it. Tonight, the emphasis was on victims. But it's the criminal or the abuser who decides when and where to attack what to take and how to hurt, not the victim. Ms. Lynch Some says her victim's advocate organization gets about 4,000 calls a year from victims child. who need help. And she tells me that's just the tip of the iceberg. She says about half of those who call are victims of but street crimes, people who are just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Many muggings occur in places just like this one, a dark parking lot late at night to women headed to their cars alone. That's exactly what happened to North Miami lawyer Nancy Appleton just a few months ago. And this person grabbed my purse, so I grabbed my purse. He pulled me and my purse out of the car, tore up my leg pretty badly. It's still badly bruised after four or five months now. And Ms. Uh, Appleton tells I me she's now look looking for answers, ways to prevent car, becoming a victim again. I feel violated, the fact that somebody could, could do that to me. I'm a, I'm a large woman. I always thought I was very strong. I always thought I could protect myself. I now found out that the element of surprise makes everybody defenseless. That's... Appleton tells me she's very careful now to lock her car door, and she always has her keys ready before she ever gets to her car. Other than that, she and the others were told tonight to always think defensively. What would you do if you were suddenly attacked? And to be aware of what's going around you as much as possible all the time. Steve? A man who's long been a challenger in Dade County politics is hospitalized in fair condition tonight. Evelio Australia was shot once in the thigh outside his West Dade home this morning by an unidentified gunman. Australia dropped out of the Miami mayoral race just last Friday. Hialeah police tonight are crediting news reports about a young woman who disappeared for a new theory in the case that she may have run away to hide the fact that she dropped out of college. The search continues for 22-year-old Barbara Velmena, last seen Thursday night at Westland Mall. Her car was found in a mall parking lot, apparently ransacked, 
The aspiring model was first said to be an honors student at the University of Miami. Tonight, we're told she hasn't been registered at the UM in nearly a year. Her family was of impression that, under the impression that she was an honor student with a 3.8 average, average in school. And uh, as a matter of fact, her father was still giving her cash in various increments at various times for school books and for tuition and lunches and clothes for school and so on and so forth. But she wasn't in school? No. Barbara's family remains convinced tonight that she was abducted. Investigators are still looking into that possibility as well. Still ahead, a Save the Chimps campaign in Broward. President Reagan has made a new offer to end the arms race, and it's one the Soviets say they can refuse. The president made the offer today at the United Nations, marking the opening of the 38th General Assembly, noticeably absent with the Soviet foreign minister, Andrei Gromyko, who refused to attend the session when the U.S. said it could not assure his safety. Mr. Reagan touched only briefly on the downing of that Korean Airlines jet. The main thrust of his speech was preventing nuclear war. Is open. It is time for the Soviet Union to walk through it. No reaction from the Soviets tonight on the president's speech. Our NATO allies, however, are calling the president's proposal a significant step toward ending the arms race. Although no major new fighting is reported in Lebanon tonight, scattered violence continues despite the truce. Two Lebanese soldiers were reported killed by snipers. U.S. Marines are still on duty in Lebanon as Congress debates the role they'll continue to play there. As for the Lebanese government, political divisions are threatening attempts to rebuild the war-torn nation. However, President Jamal is playing down the problems, and the Lebanese people are trying to get back to a normal lifestyle, one in which they don't have to dodge artillery shells. There's not much to go on tonight. That's what investigators are saying about clues from the debris of Korean Airlines Flight 7 turned over by the Soviet Union today. The Russians presented an American and Japanese delegation with 76 items in five crates. They contained mostly clothing and personal belongings of passengers on the ill-fated flights, along with some pieces of fuselage. Tonight, a team of wildlife experts in Broward are getting ready for an unusual expedition. Mark Wollen has the story from our news center in Fort Lauderdale. Mark. Sally, sometime in the next week, a team of wildlife experts are going to pack their gear and quietly head out into some woods in Dania. Their goal, to save a colony of monkeys living in an area that's about to be leveled in the name of progress. Nobody knows how many are out there, but the vervet or green monkeys have been living in the bush east of the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport for more than 20 years now, ever since they escaped or were released from a wildlife exhibit in the 1950s. Lonnie Wigan of the Broward Humane Society showed me how she, along with a member of the Fish and Game Commission and an expert from the monkey jungle, will attempt to study the monkeys sometime in the next week, a rugged chore designed to figure out how to save the monkeys' lives. Either we leave them, there's enough property and there's not too many monkeys where they can be left, or they have to be relocated. If they have to be relocated, then they have to be humanely trapped and um, taken elsewhere. From Skycam 7, you can see how the habitat the monkeys call home is about to be destroyed. The airport on the west expanding across Federal Highway and into hundreds of acres of dense woods is slated to be cleared. One question Wigan and the others hope to answer on their upcoming survey whether there'll be enough jungle remaining to support the monkey population. Nobody has any intention of harming the monkeys, um, fish and game, the Humane Society, Broward County. Nobody is going to do anything to harm them physically or psychologically. I want people to realize that. It took a photographer from NBC News many hours to capture the wild monkeys of Dania on tape. Whether to capture the monkeys for real in a way both safe and humane is the challenge confronting the wildlife experts involved now. The date of that outing to scout the monkeys remains something of a secret tonight. Lonnie Wigan and the others eager to keep the expedition small, no news media allowed. Don't want to scare off the monkey, but it is scheduled to happen sometime in the next week, and we'll have the findings for you right here at the news center. Who would have thought when they went to build or expand the Fort Lauderdale airport, they would have had to cope with a population of monkeys? Sally and Steve. Good point, Mark. Thank you. Coming up next, Don Chula is entertaining offers to jump to the USFL. Oh, say it ain't so. And we'll also take a look at the deciding race of the America's Cup. Time to turn to Doug now with the latest in sports. What do we have? Happy Aussies and generals looking for a coach. That's about the size of it, I guess. So I guess this whole America's Cup thing came down to superior Australian technology. That's hard to say, but uh, that's about the size of that, too. The Australian victory 
snapped the longest winning streak in the history of sports. In 132 years of sailing, the U.S. had never been beaten in the America's Cup Series. The difference was that mystery keel the Aussies used. You'd think Billy Martin would step in and file a protest or something. The American boat Liberty on the left here, skippered by Dennis Connor, was in the lead clear up until the fifth leg when the Australia 2 caught the wind just right, bolted ahead, and went on to win by 23 seconds, taking the series 4-3. Oh, to be a champagne salesman in Australia right now. They are going bonkers over there. Even the prime minister says he's been nipping at the bubbly. A tough loss for the Americans, but it could be worse. The Russians could have won this thing, and we have never lived that down. <laughs> Would you believe Don Shula might be headed to the USFL? You head there, too, for a million bucks a year. That's the figure being tossed around. The New Jersey generals of the new league uh, apparently are about to be sold, and the new owner wants Shula to run his team. I was uh, contacted last week, and... Uh, I was told that this uh, gentleman was going to purchase the generals and he might be interested in me uh, uh, coming up there. And uh, so uh, then this did happen and I was asked by a newspaper man uh, yesterday uh, whether or not uh, this was true and I acknowledge the fact that uh, there was some contact last week by people representing uh, this individual. This is the same team that shelled out enough dough to convince number 34 Herschel Walker to bypass his senior year of college. These guys play hardball. It remains to be seen if Dolphins owner Joe Robbie can compete with them financially. I've been in the NFL for a long time, and I'll sit down with Joe and give him every opportunity to work something out here. In the event that something can't be worked out here, then I, certainly I have to keep my options open. So it looks like the next move belongs to Joe Robbie. Shula's current contract expires on February 28th. In the National Football League tonight, the Giants leading Green Bay 20-3 late in the third. Green Bay started the night at 2-1. The Giants are 1-2. and two. The Miami Hurricanes have cracked the national rankings. UM's 20-0 route of Notre Dame Saturday night did the trick. That's Bernie Kozar to Eddie Brown for the TD. Canes are now 3-1, rated 15th by United Press International. Here's a rundown of the top 10. Nebraska, a unanimous number one. Then it's Texas, Iowa, Alabama, and North Carolina. Number six is West Virginia. Then it's Oklahoma, Georgia. The Gators are ninth. Auburn, number 10. The Hurricanes rated 15th. As we said, Florida State has been knocked out of the top 20. The Atlanta Braves act like they still have a chance to catch the Dodgers in the National League West. They started the night three and a half back with only eight games to play. Doesn't give them a whole lot of time, but the Braves are hanging in there. They scored four in the first tonight to beat San Francisco. Jerry Royster drove home two of those runs with that double, and Atlanta won it 6-2. to two. And meanwhile, the Dodgers are getting beat by the Reds. 8-5, bottom of the ninth, but the Reds have changed pitchers a couple of times. Looks like the Dodgers have something going. If L.A. gets beat, the Braves would be just two and a half games out now. Elsewhere, Houston leads San Diego in the seventh inning. Bob Forsh of the Cardinals, a no-hitter tonight. Second of his career. Too late for the Redbirds, though. St. Louis and the Expos have been eliminated. Philadelphia won. They beat Chicago 5-2. Phillies have won 11 straight. The American League races are over. Chicago and Baltimore have clinched. Everybody else is just playing out the string. The Yankees lost their game tonight to Cleveland. The final was 7 to nothing. And the time to fish tomorrow is early. You might try your luck about 5.30 or so. That's what the graph says anyway. Uh, 5.30 appears to be the biggest peak we've had all month, and I know that excites you. Well, if you're not out there, I'm sure they'll start, right, anyway? I think they'll be there with us. All right, thanks, Doug. All right. A little wind, a little rain are headed our way. Bob Sopa will tell us all about it right after this. Well, for all of you who are going to be up at 5.30 in the morning to get in on that excellent fishing time, let's see what kind of weather you're going to have. Better take a sweater with you and maybe the rain gear, just in case. There's only some passing showers, though. Right now, it's 75 degrees in Miami. On Miami Beach, it's 78 degrees. West Kendall, 72. Fort Lauderdale, 77. Key West, 78 degrees. Winds are out of the north at 7. Barometer just above 30 inches. The relative humidity at 74%. Just as there has been all day today, just light shower activity along the southeast coastline on color radar. It's moving toward the southwest, but very, very rapidly, and it's just small cells extending all the way out to Grand Bahama, Bimini, and then down through the Straits, but it's really insignificant shower activity. Around the state today, high temperatures range from a couple of spots with 70s, St. Augustine and Jacksonville, everybody else in the 80s. In the Southland, 85 degrees in Hollywood and 87 degrees West Kendall, 84 miles. Miami Beach, those are highs of the day, up around the uh, Panhandle, 80 degrees at Apalachicola. Tonight, fair skies, small craft advisories around all of Florida's waters, quite breezy, 59 degrees in the north, 60s in central, 70s in south Florida. Tomorrow, there will be more sunshine, just a few scattered showers, and when you get them, they're going to be moving fast toward the southwest. Highs will range from 75 to 87 degrees. If you plan to do some boating, you might plan 
for Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Doesn't look all that great. Here's the reason for all that. High pressure here, low pressure here, the two pushing against each other, forming that northeasterly strong wind that's kicking up those seas. It's kind of a tough one out there. Take a look at SkyScan 7 radar, uh, satellite now. Heaviest weather out around Provo, Utah. They picked up 60 mile per hour winds out of heavy thunderstorms there, but insignificant rainfall there. Only about a half an inch, the most rain in the southwestern corner of the nation. Rainfall likely uh, tomorrow along a frontal system extending from a low pressure cell up around the Dakotas. That's going to likely be the most rainfall in the nation. Even so, we'll get our share and there will be a lot of sunshine with that high pressure cell over most of the rest of the nation. As far as high temperatures today, 62 degrees of Montreal, 66 Buffalo, 69 Pittsburgh. The only 70, well, there were two of them, Toronto and New York up in the northeast. As far as the south part of the nation, temperatures in the 80s, the return of summer, what do you think? Oklahoma, Dallas, Little Rock, New Orleans, all in the 80s, along with Miami, 70s in the rest of the south. Up around the... Uh, the uh, central part of the nation, the Midwest, 92 degrees, a record at Williston last week. They broke a record low today. They broke a record high. 79 at Marquette, Michigan did the same thing, broke the record high today after breaking record lows last week. Also a record high today at Sheridan, Wyoming, 91 degrees. Otherwise, temperatures in the 80s, 90s, and even some 60s and 50s out around the uh, northwest coastline. Here's the way it'll look tomorrow. That band of 80s will continue right on up into the northern plains. May see a 90 or two up there. Mainly, though, we'll see 90s along the Texas-Oklahoma border and down in the southwest. The rest of the nation, 70s and a couple of areas with 60s. Our forecast lows tonight are going to look, uh, we don't think quite this cold, but the record lows are 68 degrees in Fort Lauderdale, 72 in Miami Beach, and 69 in Miami. Take a look at what we're forecasting then for tonight. Partly cloudy with isolated showers. Overnight lows about 72 degrees. Now that's real close to the record. And a lot depends on how much northerly flow we get for tomorrow. It'll be mostly sunny with just rapidly passing rain showers. Highs 86 degrees most places on the beaches. Small craft advisory continues in effect. Winds out of the northeast about 20 knots. Seas 6 to 10 feet. Bay water exposed area. Low tide at 557 in the morning. Next high tide at 1224. Sunrise at 711. That's a nice number, isn't it? 711. That sunset. I'll go to Las Vegas with that. 712 will be sunset tomorrow night. Days are shrinking. Getting shorter and shorter. Well, naturally, we get by December 20th or 21st, be the shortest day of the year. I look forward to that. But not, not me. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Tonight in our weekly Crime Stopper dramatization, we take you back to the early morning hours of Monday, July 25th. 23-year-old Shannon Marie Doherty was killed in a hit-and-run accident on Royal Palm Boulevard in Margate. This is where it happened, shortly after 1 o'clock on the morning of Monday, July 25th. The life of 23-year-old Shannon Marie Doherty was snuffed out on this lonely stretch of Royal Palm Boulevard in Margate. Shannon Doherty was a nursing student at Broward Community College. She worked weekends part-time as a barmaid. It was a little after 8 o'clock on Sunday night, July 24th. Shannon and some of her friends came here, Fort Lauderdale night spot Bojangles on North Federal Highway. Now it's half past midnight. Shannon has left her friends to drive alone to her home in Coral Springs. But she never got there. Two young girls driving west on Royal Palm Boulevard saw Doherty's car speed by them, skid wildly, then flip over three times before coming to rest in the median strip. They stopped to help, but when they saw the victim lying face down, they ran back to their car and sped away to call police. Driver of the approaching car, however, did not stop. Possibly the driver was asleep at the wheel. The car passed over the sea of broken glass, heading directly for Shannon's unconscious body on the roadway. As the unknown car drove over Shannon, her body was somehow caught in the undercarriage and was dragged 88 feet. The driver must have been aware of what had happened, for at this point, the driver hit the brakes, swerved left, and bounced off one of the palm trees in the median strip. Shannon's body was dislodged by this maneuver, and the car sped away in the direction of Coral Springs. Police units responding to the telephone call by the two young girls were on the scene in a matter of minutes but it was already too late for Shannon. Investigators believe that the car that killed Shannon was a compact with damage to the left fender and possibly the left side. If you have any information on this case, call Crime Stoppers at 765-TIPS in Broward or 326-TIPS in Dade this week. 
You could be eligible for a $1,000 cash reward. Your identity will be kept totally anonymous. That's Crime Stoppers in Dade at 326 Tips, 765 Tips in Broward. Crime Stoppers, it's working. When we come back, a crackdown on people who take more than groceries out of the grocery store. Finally tonight, they make good laundry baskets and storage containers. But come this Saturday, stealing a shopping cart or a milk carton case could land you in jail. Thefts of those items from Florida grocery stores is costing consumers an astounding $13 million a year. A new law aimed at preventing such ripoffs hits offenders with a fine or a stay in jail. And with that, we wrap up News Center 7 tonight. Our next news is tomorrow morning at 6.30 on Today in Florida. Now for all of us at News Center 7, thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.